There is something that I want to talk about because I have been working on this piece for, I mean, three weeks now and I have not had to change my acrylic paints once. They have stayed wet throughout this entire three week process. I wasn't originally going to do the video on something like this. The product that I've been using has absolutely blown me away with how good it is at keeping those acrylic paints wet. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I painted that snow leopard and tell you a little bit more about this amazing new product. Hey, so today I am starting something new and something really exciting because it's something that I don't normally do and it's something I want to branch out a little bit more with my paintings. And I've got a piece where, yeah, the subject is still an animal, it's going to be a snow leopard, but I also want to include a little bit more of the background because at the minute I feel like my backgrounds are just lacking a little bit. So I want to try and push myself and try and create a realistic background as well as a realistic animal. So I'm really excited to give it a go and yeah, let's just jump right in. I projected my image onto my canvas and then using pure black acrylic paint straight from the tube with a very small amount of water, I started to block in the spots and some of the darker features of the leopard. I am about an hour into the painting now and this is the most tedious, most time consuming process, painting the spots. But it's done now and I'm ready to start the next layer. Quick tip. If you're painting on store-bought canvases, give them an extra layer of gesso before you start painting. It strengthens the canvas, helps the paint stick better, and it gives the canvas a much smoother finish with less grain, which is so much better for realism. So I've done my wash and I've used Payne's Grey and Raw Umber, and I have tried to keep it a little bit colder in the areas of the snow and a little bit warmer in the areas of the snow leopard but I've also brought in some of this warm into the background just to tie the two together, tie the subject and the background together. What I'm going to do next is work on the fur blocking, so work on the colours of the snow leopard a little bit more. So I've pre-mixed my colours. I mix my paints on a glass palette using a palette knife. I'm doing a large quantity of paint to help keep it wet and make sure there's enough to last the whole painting process. The major benefit of acrylic paints is the drying time, but that is also the biggest challenge with them, and it puts a lot of people off. They actually start drying as soon as they leave the tube and hit the palette. And there's nothing worse than reaching for some fresh paint only to find that it's gone rock hard on the palette. It means you have to remix your colours, which is a time consuming process, and it's actually one of my least favourite parts of painting. The drying time also gives you a problem if you're planning on working on larger pieces that might take days, weeks or even months to complete. Other than mixing your colours at the start of every session, there wasn't really much I could do. Until I found this brilliant new product that kept my paint wet, not just for days, but the entire month that I took to paint this piece. It is day two on this piece now. I have blocked in all of the snow leopard, so now it's time to get started with some of those details. My paint stayed wet overnight, so I could pick up right where I left off. I cannot tell you enough how much this new product has affected my painting. One thing that I hated doing, having to mix my colours again every session, I don't have to worry about anymore. I can just use the new product and one other really simple trick to keep my acrylic paints wet on my palette for months. I'm using the same colours I mixed up for the blocking, but now I'm using a smaller detail brush. When I'm painting the realistic fur, I add the dark strands first, then move on to the lighter strands. The final step for painting the fur texture is adding new colours with a glazing technique. 
So I've just finished painting the leg for my patrons over on my Patreon channel Studio Wildlife. I will be doing a full video on there of this painting, including close-ups of the head and how I painted the head and details of how I paint the fur and the background. So if you'd like to learn more about that, go and check that out. I'll leave a link in the description below. For the rest of the painting, I'm gonna first block in all of the spots everywhere and then work on it section by section by section until this snow leopard is in a place that I'm happy with. So we're on to day three of this painting and it's, it's gonna be a long process, but hopefully today I'm gonna to get the vast majority of this snow leopard fur finished. I only really get to work on my originals one to one and a half days a week with work and then also filming for YouTube and Patreon. So it's nice to be able to spend a little bit of time creating an original piece like this. Moving on to the fur of the body, it's just a case of repeating the previous steps. Dark strands, light strands, then glazing. When painting fur, you need to make sure that you vary the length and the thickness of your brush strokes. You don't want the fur to look too uniform, otherwise it looks like it's been combed flat, which obviously isn't very realistic. Painting fur like this is not a quick process. It can take hours or even days on a large piece like this. And because of my schedule, I needed a way to make my paintings last for weeks. And I found a way to do that. So I've never used this product before and it's something that I'm, I'm a little bit dubious about because I don't usually like using mediums with my acrylic paints, but I got this acrylic retarder from Jackson's. I'll pop a link in the description. And basically what you do is you mix it with your paint on your palette, or that's how I've used it. And that paint has stayed wet my entire painting process. I mentioned a second tip about keeping the paint wet, which is just as important as the acrylic retarder, but I'll get onto that in a minute. First, let me tell you all about my experience with the medium. For me, it was perfect. It stopped the paints drying in the open air, so I could leave them overnight and over the course of weeks, and they stayed wet. I didn't notice it affecting the consistency of the paint or change the colours and it didn't really affect the drying time on the canvas that much. Maybe adding a minute or so to the workability of the paint on the canvas, which meant they could be blended more easily, acting almost like oil paints for a very short period of time. And this was great for the rocks and the snow. The other thing that I did to keep my acrylic paints wet for months, as well as using that acrylic retarder, can be split into two simple steps. After every single painting session, I first sprayed my palettes with water, and then I covered it with cling film, or cellophane, or saran wrap if you're in the US. I've had this palette of paints covered with cling film, the cling film just helps trap in the moisture, but I've also mixed my paints with that acrylic retarder. And I, no word of a lie, these paints are completely wet still. They are still completely workable. No skins have formed at all on them. And it means that I can mix up a big batch of colors for a painting, and then I can save those colors for the entire painting process of weeks. I mean, judging by how wet these paints still are, this could last for months without having to remix those colors. It is a complete game changer for me, and I think it's something that I'm gonna be using in every single one of my paintings from this moment forward. I'll leave a link in the description below for that acrylic retarder. Mine's from Jackson's. Um, you can get any brand, I'm sure it works the same, but I am just really happy with the one that I got. It works really well, making sure that those paints last your entire painting process. 
Back to the snow leopard, got a little bit more left to do, got all of the snow in the foreground and then I've just got to refine that snow leopard a little bit more because I did a wash over the background just to knock it back a little bit and some of that wash has gone over the edge of the snow leopard so I just need to refine that edge a little bit more just to bring him forward, make him stand out or her stand out. But we'll save that for another video. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about how I painted this snow leopard in terms of the fur technique that I used, then check out this video right here. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.